ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு செஷன் டூ ஆஃப் தி சாப்டர் பில்டிங் பிளானிங் ஆஃப் தி சப்ஜெக்ட் எலிமெண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் சிவில் இன்ஜினியரிங் ஐ எம் ப்ரொஃபஸர் அசோக் மோத்தியானி ஃப்ரம் எல்டி காலேஜ் ஆஃப் இன்ஜினியரிங் நவ் இன் தி செஷன் ஒன் வீ ஹவ் ஆல்ரெடி கவர்ட் தி வேரியஸ் டாபிக்ஸ் செஷன் ஒன் வீ கவர் ஆல் தி டெஃபினேஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் சம் கிளாசிஃபிகேஷன் ஆஃப் த பில்டிங்ஸ் in the definitions we classify we define the building what is a building the building which provides us roof and roof is supported by the uh, either walls or uh, columns and beams and then on based on that we classified the buildings in uh, three categories uh, one is the road bearing structure frame structure and composite structures then we define what is the planning planning is the start from the identifying the object of the building what is the object then based on the object uh, uh, what are the uh, what are what are the activities to be performed in the building and how those activities are to be classified or distributed on each floor what is the requirement of land how many floors will be there then how much land is required then purchasing the land or acquiring the land how to select the site for uh, purchasing the land that also we saw in the first session and uh, <clears throat> then we classified the buildings based on the uh, purpose that is a use so there are basically residential and non residential again in the non residential we classified the buildings in uh, different categories uh, that is the uh, <clears throat> public building commercial building and industrial building then we discussed about the various component parts of the uh, building like uh, a uh, plinth walls columns beams floors seals and uh, lintels weather shade doors windows ventilators roof slabs parapet stair lift ramps so then <coughs> uh, we uh, identified the uh, civil engineering uh, drawing what is the drawing importance of the drawing why drawing is uh, necessary so we identified the necessity of the drawing then uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, what is uh, the civil engineering drawing which are the different views uh, which are drawn for the uh, civil engineering drawing that is the orthographic view then isometric view then perspective view so <clears throat> then uh, in the isometric view if we cut by the horizontal section and draw the top view that is the plan and in you know, a isometric uh, object or building isometric view we cut with the vertical section and draw the uh, front view that is called the uh, sectional elevation if we draw the front elevation front view of the isometric building uh, or isometric view that is called the elevation of the building so plan section elevation are covered in the orthographic uh, views and isometric view is having the three dimensions and all the three dimensions Uh, appearing in the view are same as in the actual object but in the perspective view the dimensions uh, are different even they have the same dimension because the perspective is very same as the camera view that we have uh, seen that and for peri- uh, starting the planning arranging the spaces we uh, use the line plans uh, line plans are uh, may be drawn to the scale may not be drawn to the scale uh, different line plans are drawn with a different arrangement of uh, the spaces bedroom drawing room kitchen store uh, veranda living room study room all these spaces are uh, arranged in uh, different patterns uh, based on the principles of planning and then uh, the uh, advantages and disadvantages of each and every line plan is uh, 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 <coughs> observed and discussed with the client and then one plan is finalized for which the all the uh, working drawings are prepared and submitted for the approval from the local controlling authority so <clears throat> in a, a previous uh, session also we covered this elementary principles of planning so planning <coughs> for planning we use the principles of planning principles of architecture and the principles of structural analysis and design as well as uh, we use the building bylaws the, the rules and regulations which are framed by local controlling authority so that uh, the construction is not haphazard in the city uh, the 
principles of planning gives us uh, the uh, functional spaces or good working spaces or we can call them as efficient spaces where the habitants uh, can easily perform their all activities and the principles of architecture will enhance the aesthetic view or look of the building in from inside as well as from the outside and structural analysis principles will uh, give us the structural safety structural stability to all the components so overall the structure will be stable strong even in the uh, worst condition like uh, in earthquake or uh, floods also yes. so bylaws also uh, if you if we follow the bylaws then the uh, even uh, <coughs> we, can, we will be able to take, take the permission from the authorities if we do not uh, follow the bylaws the authorities will not give the permission for the construction so then uh, these are the uh, fundamentals uh, uh, easy functioning then uh, comfortable environment structural stability then aesthetically good from uh, <coughs> inside as well as outside okay. So principles of planning, uh, um, we start with the purchase of the uh, we uh, land. Before purchasing the land, we have to decide how much uh, size is required. Uh, <coughs> so we will first identify the object of uh, the building for which it is to be constructed. And according to the object of the function, whether it is a residential, so which are the activities to be performed how much total space is required so how many floors will be there then how which type of building will be there whether it will be load bearing or framed structure then based on that we will decide how much land is required if it is a school is to be constructed then we will decide with different type of activities then how many floors we are going to construct whether it will be two story building or six story building so based on the number of uh, stories, we will decide whether it will be framed structure or load bearing structure. Then according to the total requirement of uh, spaces, we will find out what uh, will be the size of the land required and we will uh, go for search of the land uh, for selection of the site for purchase of the land for a particular object of the building. Uh, the factors we consider is the availability of the water. So. If the uh, water is uh, available, then what is the source of the water? And uh, uh, if the water is not available, then uh, it will be difficult to construct the building as well as uh, uh, difficult th for the habitants uh, after construction to survive in the uh, building. So the, uh, the prime requirement is the uh, water. And then uh, second criteria is the transportation. Road transportation is a very uh, essential for construction as well as the use of the building. So the next requirement for the selection of site is the uh, drainage system. Uh, the, if the drainage system is available then it will be uh, very convenient to construct the building as well as for the evident also. Otherwise we have to uh, build the system where we can uh, drain the waste water from the building. And uh, this type of ground also, if it should, is level ground, then it's uh, better to have the uh, level ground. Then these are the elements. Uh, these are the elements which are uh, all these are negative elements which which should not be very near to the site we want to acquire or we want to select the site. Okay. So <clears throat> after purchasing the land, then we will uh, identify the activities which are to be performed in the building so if it is a for example if it is a, a school building we will identify the classroom laboratories playground then laboratories drawing rooms etc uh, here uh, i am taking the example of the residential building uh, all of you are very conversant with the all the activities which are to be performed in the residential building so uh, with the cooking of the food, eating, for cooking of the food we need the kitchen, eating, dining space, for sleeping we need the bedroom for entertainment, we may need the theatre or leisure room or the TV room, then bathroom, WC for washing, study room, we may need the study room, 
uh, for the building is to be constructed for some professional and he want to do some uh, interaction with the clients at the residence so he may need one space room for uh, consultancy so office to be provided then uh, uh, worship room or prayer room may be uh, we may call it the puja room then garage for the parking of the vehicles or may, uh, doing the service to the uh, cleaning of the vehicles uh, uh, store room to store the goods uh, which are uh, not frequently used in the building and uh, then passages passages are the uh, spaces connecting different rooms that is called the passages or these are the called the horizontal circulation then stair for vertical circulation servant room children room professional consulting room games theater etc so we have identify the uh, the different types of spaces now we have to arrange all these spaces in a, a given land okay or we have to distribute these spaces over different floors so we have to locate uh, different uh, spaces that uh, uh, requires uh, some uh, uh, knowledge of the science as well as uh, requires the knowledge of the uh, geography that is the location or uh, at which locate uh, at different location the uh, wind direction is different and the sunlight also varies from uh, in different direction of the building so <coughs> again we will classify the space we identify the spaces now for arranging these spaces at different uh, location so uh, total land boundary is there and one of the face of the land boundary will be touching with the street or two boundaries of the land may be touching the street if it is a, a corner plot so the arrangement of his space is with reference to the front street and uh, the back side of the land and uh, different floors when the, we will divide these activities in these categories these are public or social uh, activities where the outsider or outside people can come and meet with the family and then the family activity where the outsiders may not be uh, <coughs> uh, desire to be present in the family uh, activities then individual means uh, a person needs the isolation for its uh, particular uh, type of work so individual then private means uh, uh, total privacy uh, that is a visual privacy as well as uh, from the uh, audio privacy no disturbance of the sound is uh, is uh, advisable so work where we want to work like kitchen or washing place washing spaces study office these are the spaces where we perform some kind of uh, activity or we do work again this is another uh, same classification but we are uh, have the examples here so public area most used portion of the home comprised of the entry entry is the public uh, place or social uh, space family room living room media room game room so all these spaces where you can uh, uh, sit with the outsiders then private rooms areas such as the bedroom bathroom etc are the private uh, spaces then work spaces the kitchen laundry uh, hvac and storage offices etc most of these areas should not be in direct view of the guest except the kitchen now classification another classification is so we will classify these spaces in two categories one is the positive spaces others are negative spaces the purpose of this division is uh, naturally we will uh, uh, use the positive spaces having uh, the good look uh, or having the more cleanness should be in front of the building so that whenever outsider uh, approaches to, uh, or meet meets our family members he should not have the vision of the negative spaces like washing places or store where the things may not be in a proper order okay so we have classification in this two category positive and negative in positive spaces the living room balcony stair office like that or even the dining space also may be categorized in the positive spaces the negative spaces washroom wc bath store garage servants room these can be classified as negative room and uh, in the planning arranging these spaces we will uh, hide the negative spaces that means uh, we will uh, align or locate the lo uh, negative spaces in back side of the building where the uh, 
persons from outside do not have the direct uh, view of those spaces and in front we will locate all the positive spaces the spaces to whom we can give the some uh, architectural or ornamental view those type of uh, spaces are always uh, uh, kept in the uh, side which is uh, in touch with the is facing to the street then classification of spaces can be divided into categories the spaces where uh, we spend less amount of time and spaces where we spend more amount of the time so the spaces where we spend less amount of time uh, can be classified uh, these are can be identified as washroom wc bath store passages even the stair also though hardly we uh, spend uh, a few minutes of the day uh, in these spaces and the spaces where we spend more amount of time can be identified as a living room bedroom study room so more than uh, one hour and to 10 hours or even more than 10 hours also we, so we may spend sometimes time in these spaces so these spaces should have the larger dimensions the spaces where we spend more amount of time should have the larger spaces and spaces we where we spend less time should have the smaller spaces smaller dimensions identify the spaces according to activity decide the size of the space room for each activity then establish the relationship or order of the activity so some of the activities are interrelated with each other for example if a kitchen is uh, provided in one corner of the building and uh, dining space is provided in another corner of the building so uh, the there will be lot of wastage of energy uh, for serving the food from kitchen to dining space okay so we have to apply the logic logic says that uh, uh, these two spaces activities are connected with each other so they should be very near or adjacent to each other so dining space usually is preferred to be very adjacent to kitchen and kitchen uh, serves the food to all these spaces so it should be centrally located even the wc bath it should be also one common wc bath should be centrally located so that it is approachable from all other spaces similarly store so uh, majority of the cases in the store the uh, food grains or the uh, goods which are uh, utilized in the kitchen are stored in the storeroom they are kept in the storeroom so storeroom should be very uh, adjacent to the kitchen so these are the logic we have to apply while arranging these spaces then we will prepare the rough sketch line plans different line plans will be prepared using those line plans uh, we can uh, uh, show those line plans uh, one alternate uh, one line plan we prepared another line plan we have prepared and third fourth so all these line plans having the different arrangement of the spaces will be shown to the client by the engineer and uh, he will be explained all these uh, plus and minus points of uh, these uh, arrangement so client will decide which line plan suits his requirement okay then he will select okay this one is the line plan which suits my requirement and then that particular line plan will be uh, developed by architect or uh, engineer uh, in the form of the working drawings that means you uh, will be preparing the uh, plan in which uh, the all the horizontal dimensions will appear you will prepare the elevation in elevation we can see that uh, the building how it will look after completion of the uh, structure in elevation we don't uh, mention any dimensions on detailing is not done detailing means components of the uh, different components of the structures are not mentioned in the elevation just uh, title subtitle elevation is mentioned and then sectional elevation is done to uh, give the details of the type of the material for each and every component and uh, what is the vertical dimension of the particular uh, uh, component that also can be read from the uh, sectional view so these uh, line plans are prepared we will hide the negative spaces provide large size rooms for positive spaces provide better natural light ventilation to for all rooms where we spend more time provide public social spaces in front size group spaces according to following 14 principles popularly known as principles of planning so these are the different uh, uh, <coughs> principles of uh, planning 
according to all these 14 principles the arrangement of spaces is decided location of all the spaces for all the activities is decided so first is the aspect uh, aspect means uh, the arrangement of doors and windows for better sunshine or breeze so more faces should be exposed to the external environment so for better sunshine and breeze uh, if more number of uh, sides of any room are exposed or touching or in touch with the external environment that is uh, uh, that is having the more advantage if the only one side of uh, out of four sides of the room if one side is uh, touching or uh, is facing the external environment that is uh, not better so more the number of faces uh, facing the external environment better it will be having the uh, sunshine and breeze in the room so we can uh, have the one side two side three side even we can have the f all the four sides exposed to the external environment by increasing the aspect in this figure you see this rectangle uh, having is a simple uh, rectangle so if uh, you are locating any room in at any corner so it will have the two sides of that room exposed to external external environment but if a room is uh, located here at the middle of the uh, space it will have only uh, one face exposed to external environment now we can increase the aspect by providing the projections so here you see this uh, projections are there similarly here also projections are there if a room is located here it will have one two three and four sides of the room exposed to the external environment so uh, keeping the same length of the perimeter and providing the projections we can increase the perimeter we can increase the uh, corners available for the each and every room so rooms will have more number of corners and uh, more exposure to external environment for better breeze and sunshine second prospect is the uh, appearance of uh, inside and outside of the buildings so <clears throat> when the person is using the habitant is uh, sitting inside the room so he should have the uh, view he will have the view of the outside environment from the inside so <clears throat> to have the better view of the outside uh, he will be we will be providing the windows so proper location of the windows proper size of the windows is necessary uh, wherever the outside uh, objects are good at that place we may provide the window and uh, wherever the outside uh, view are having the uh, negative features at that point of uh, location we may not provide the window so this type of windows we may provide if a simple window is provided if a wall is there so instead of providing this simple wall simple window this is a simplest so the person is standing here you have the view only this side this type of view only this view will be available to him but if we project this window like this so these projections are provided to have the suppose person is standing here so he will have wider view of the external environment so more view here and here the lesser view is there so this is the this is a conventional way of providing the window and this we can improve by provide projecting the windows so we can improve the prospect prospect that means uh, the outer view from the inside and uh, uh, inner view from the outside both we can improve by providing some uh, projection uh, in the walls and providing the windows at the projections so third principle is the circulation circulation is the when <coughs> a building is constructed so for different activities 
the habitants or person will move from one space to another space so this uh, movement of the uh, person from one space to uh, other space should be uh, very uh, streamlined flow uh, sh should be unobstructed and it should be very easy and the movement from one space to another space in a, on the same floor is known as the horizontal circulation okay. so for horizontal circulations either person has to move from one room to other room crossing uh, the different rooms or the different rooms may be connected by passages so passages are used to connect the different rooms passages uh, uh, should be minimum because uh, they are used to only for connecting the two spaces Here is the example of a one uh, build, residential building where you can see this is a, this is a bath and this is a WC. This is a bedroom, bedroom, this is a drawing room, kitchen. Now uh, here you see this, uh, uh, these two rooms, bedroom and drawing room, they are connected but there is no passage. But if you want to go to the kitchen from this drawing room, he has to move from this passage. This passage space is provided. Okay, sometimes you have to provide the passages for better privacy. So passage here will have provide better privacy for this bedroom. So passages, uh, we have to minimize the passages and uh, uh, wherever required, we have to provide for having better privacy of the rooms then uh, the movement of the person from one floor to other floor is uh, called the vertical circulation for vertical circulation we provide sto may provide the stair or may provide the ramp lift escalator in in the building so usually in a residential building uh, we may provide the stair and uh, if the uh, elevation difference is very less like uh, from the outside ground to plinth okay uh, we may provide the steps or we may provide the ramp so that uh, the wheeled vehicle or wheelchair can easily uh, move from the ground to the ground floor uh, and these lifts are provided in the multi-story buildings uh, where the number of stories are more than three and the lift requirement is compulsory from moving from one floor to other floor these escalators are very common in the commercial buildings uh, where this uh, steps may be moving from uh, uh, lower elevation to upper elevation and person just have to uh, climb on the one of the step uh, uh, and then that uh, will be automatically lifted to the upper story when the steps are moving <clears throat> if uh, passages should occupy minimum area of construction because uh, they are uh, not providing any object just uh, simple object is connecting the spaces and if unavoidable for privacy they should be uh, well lighted suppose the space we are we are providing then there should be proper lighting in these spaces sometimes uh, in many public building also uh, the lobbies are provided between two classrooms but uh, uh, they are lacking in the natural light so sometimes uh, we need to uh, provide the artificial light so that uh, the space uh, the persons moving in that space are can see each other and for the efficiency of the uh, building uh, then sufficient width of uh, for easy flow of the habitants in both directions Suppose it is uh, suppose a residential building, so minimum width of the uh, passage is 1 meter. But in case of the public building, more number of persons will be moving simultaneously in both the directions. So 1 meter width, which is compulsory for the residential building, will not be okay for the 
public building. So naturally we have to provide more wider passages in case of the public building, maybe 2 meter, 3 meter, 4 meter, depending upon the uh, number of persons using the space and the peak flow or peak traffic in the passages. All this should be also well ventilated. Uh, ventilation is uh, uh, necessary because uh, in passages uh, uh, persons are walking, so uh, they will be having uh, the uh, uh, breathing and uh, may uh, need the more oxygen. Suppose uh, one person is moving from in his, on the stair and from the lower story to upper story, so uh, the breathing is accelerated because uh, of the physical work. So elder persons will need the uh, fresh air so that uh, they can easily climb the stairs. So all these spaces in the even the horizontal circulation or if it is the vertical circulation should be pri properly ventilated or should have the excess of the uh, natural air. Now circulation uh, should be proper at the entry point, then main space, then clearances and exit point for efficient fluid discrete paths that allow multiple furniture configuration. So at the stage of planning itself we have to consider the furniture arrangement also and uh, uh, the location of doors and windows and location of furniture should be such a way that there should be comfortable movement of the person from one space to other space. Here are some examples, layouts, you see uh, these are the spaces, uh, these are the central uh, approach and uh, these are the lateral approach and uh, these are the diagonal approach, movement of the uh, person is entering in this space from the center and here the uh, person is move, entering uh, in the uh, one of the corner and the uh, path is uh, the moment is passage is on the side here the furniture is there. Okay. So here uh, this is the uh, another alignment and here the openings are provided in diagonally. One opening door is here, another door is here. So person has to move like this. So this type of uh, uh, moment is not desirable. Uh, so we have to uh, think of these openings as well as furnitures while planning uh, placing these uh, spaces. So these are the uh, for a few examples. Here the one door is uh, on this uh, long wall. Another uh, opening door is on another long wall. So distance covered from going from this space to this space is very less compared to this arrangement of rooms. Here the distance covered is large. So this is more efficient compared to this. Here also this is a better choice compared to this choice because here you do not obstruct, person is not obstructing the activities performed here. Okay, While here this person is moving and uh, obstructing these activities performed here. While here also you see this uh, the movement of the person from this point to this point is uh, easy while here it is uh, not comfortable here also is this is uh, advisable this is not advisable and this, here also this is advisable and this is not advisable the fourth principle of uh, planning is the economy economy means uh, uh, economy of the uh, finance and uh, finance is the resource the client when approaches uh, to engineer or architect, he will come with uh, the uh, land and uh, he will ask for the construction of the building. So the engineer will ask him the what is your budget and what, uh, uh, what is your budget or what is your uh, finance available with you and accordingly the engineer has to uh, construct the building and uh, all other resources uh, like this time, time is also one resource. If uh, time is less then the cost of construction will be more and if the time available is more then the co cost of construction can be reduced. Even the land available, if the land available is very very less 
in that uh, small land if you want to have the more spaces uh, then also the cost of the uh, building will be more so these are the three resources which uh, are provided uh, by the client to the engineer one is the finance another is the time and third is the land so uh, <coughs> the requirement and the budget finance available should match with each other so engineer will uh, estimate the cost of the building based on the area requirement of the client so for example if the approximate construction cost per square meter of the area construction area is 10000 per square meter and he wants to construct the 100 square meter so the approximate cost or finance required is a uh, hundred multiplied by 10,000 that is amounting to 10 lakh rupees. But if the uh, client is having only 8 lakh rupees, then engineer has to uh, take the steps to minimize the cost. So which are the measures which can be used to minimize the cost of the building? The choice of material, the materials which will be used uh, are affecting the cost of the structure then uh, size of the rooms we will uh, engineer may provide smaller rooms the size of different components of structure then uh, uh, the time available if you want to reduce the cost then uh, uh, you will uh, demand for the more time the next uh, uh, the criteria is the smaller plan area then two story homes instead of uh, providing all the rooms on the ground floor Okay. And instead of that, if we divide the number of rooms in two floors, ground floor and uh, first floor, that will be more economical. Because if you provide all the rooms on the ground floor, then the cost of the foundation is about 30 to 40 percent of the building cost. So you are providing more construction area on the ground. So that can be reduced by providing the half of the rooms on the ground floor and half of the rooms on the first floor. So we can uh, reduce the cost of the building. Then back to back plumbing means uh, uh, in uh, any building uh, the plumbing cost can be reduced by providing the uh, drain water supply and drainage area on the uh, ground floor and first floor vertically above each other. So the corner where you provide the or a place where you provide the WC and bath on the ground floor exactly vertically above that we have to provide the WC and bath. So there will be the uh, vertical lines for water supply and drainage will be shared by both the floors. If it is not done, if uh, the wash, uh, WC bath on the ground floor is in one corner and WC bath on the first floor in another corner, so there will be additional cost of the uh, pipelines or plumbing uh, to provide this type of arrangement. Then reduce the number of doors and windows. Uh, doors and windows these are openings uh, are having the more uh, cost components in the structure so if the economy is required if the finance available is less so we can uh, minimize the number of openings uh, use simpler foundations less jog simple rectangle structures will be less costlier use standard sizes and finishes sometimes the materials which are selected are having some complicated shape or complicated texture which are easily not easily available in the market so we have to procure at a far distance from the far distance so that will be adding on the cost of the structure so to minimize the cost we can we have to select the materials and finishes which are easily available and readily available in the market then the uh, plan for long term and easy maintenance so the components which we select should be have the uh, 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 <coughs> uh, qualities which are which require less maintenance like uh, flooring if a flooring of say mosaic tiles is uh, chosen uh, that is uh, having uh, is can be easily uh, weared and uh, can have the uh, less life uh, uh, compared to the stone and even in the stone also particularly quota stone which is more popular now Gujarat uh, is having more durability compared to other type of stones like marble.
so these are the aspects uh, for even considered for the long term easy maintenance also then reduce cubic volume and of spaces for providing the economy we can uh, uh, provide less ceiling height means roof height the distance between the top of the floor to the bottom of the roof is called the floor height so if floor height is reduced in that case what will happen the cost on the operation of the air conditioner also will be less so we can achieve uh, economy on the equipments for used for the heating or cooling purpose in winter we may use the uh, heating equipments in the uh, summer we may use the cooling equipments so this way we can there can be more options uh, we have to think of all those options which are uh, there which, which we can apply uh, without uh, hampering the other uh, without uh, compromising the other facilities like the structural stability which are the prime requirement then the second is the functional uh, requirement second and third is the the aesthetic so without compromising all these fundamental requirements uh, whatever measures are there we for uh, making the building economical we have to uh, put in practice then elegance is achieved by type of uh, finishing materials used glossy and smooth surfaces give better appearance the spaces or uh, the surfaces which are uh, glossy and smooth they are uh, less prone to uh, resting the uh, dust particles okay dust particles will not stuck to the smooth and glossy surfaces but if the rough surfaces having the rough texture all those surfaces uh, the dust particles can easily uh, attach with that surfaces and dust particles may even absorb the moisture and moisture ultimately may uh, have the uh, breeding place for the bacteria and virus which we may call as the microbes uh, which uh, ultimately on the long run will give the unhygienic condition so for elegance we the proper type of uh, materials are selected uh, the ornamental carvings uh, are to be avoided because uh, they provide the very corners and rough surfaces for uh, accumulation of dust particles moisture and the growth of the bacteria architectural compositions used on the different surfaces ornamental carvings also used to create the focus of attraction now focus of attraction means the uh, sometimes we see some building and immediately our attention is drawn to that building because of some feature so those features because of which our attention is drawn to that particular building those features are known as focus area so to create the focus area uh, the architectural composition mass composition or surface compositions are provided to attract the attention or create the beautiful building so <clears throat> for elegance uh, uh, we may provide the good shape texture color of finishing items they play important role to have the good aesthetic and good elegance even uh, sometimes the space are given some theme all the uh, uh, the form uh, shapes and plain surfaces may be colored or having the features which are pertaining to some uh, ecosystem like the forest ecosystem or the orchid ecosystem or seashore or, or marine ecosystem so they are called the thematic compositions now the flexibility the flexibility of the uh, <clears throat> this principle can be uh, have the two different approaches one flexibility is the flexibility of the uh, use of the space okay one space provided for certain purpose can be easily converted to use for the another purpose for example the study room if is provided for the study of the kids or the college going students can be should be in have the facility to easily converted to the bedroom 
another uh, aspect of the flexibility is uh, flexibility of the addition and alteration at present we are having only uh, we have planned only two bedroom hall kitchen but in future if it, uh, there is a requirement the third bedroom can easily be uh, constructed without hampering the functional and structural ability of the existing structure so that is uh, also one kind of flexibility flexibility for future operations and addition spaces in framed structures can easily be altered now uh, in the beginning we classified the building in uh, three categories one is the load bearing structure another is the framed structure now in framed structure the roofs are supported by vertical column and the space between two roofs or two floors is divided in different rooms by using the partition walls okay partition walls are not taking the load of the room so those partition walls dividing different spaces like bedroom drawing room kitchen can easily be dismantled and uh, realigned so spaces can be altered in case of the multi story building because uh, the roofs are not supported by the walls okay? only they are supported by the columns so in load bearing structure the roof is supported by the walls so in the load bearing structures we cannot remove the wall if we will remove the wall any particular wall that will have the adverse effect on the st stability or strength of the building particularly to the roof uh, where the roof is supporting uh, roof is supported by the wall and that particular wall is removed then the slab may have the deflection so flexibility for uh, multiple use of the spaces drawing room can be converted to the bedroom because nowadays these furnitures also are uh, coming in such a way that uh, the sofa can be converted to the uh, sofa can be sofa come uh, storage come bed okay so there will be the sliding uh, uh, platform which goes inside and can if you at the night if you want to use as a bedroom can be slided outside and put the bed on that can be used as a bed also study room can be converted to the bedroom in case of uh, college even in public building also uh, this aspect of flexibility can be used like in college the drawing hall can be converted to the auditorium in case of hotels also the banquet hall can be converted to the conference room flexibility provides economy too as same space is shared for two different purposes so with the help of economy we are ultimately achieving the saving on the cost okay instead of providing two different uh, uh, spaces for two different activities okay one single space is shared by two different activities so we are reducing the cost by uh, 50% the seventh principle is the uh, furniture arrangement so this furniture arrangement is a very important aspect while arranging the spaces uh, deciding the size of the rooms and uh, deciding the location of the doors and windows after completion of the structure where and which furniture we are going to place that uh, plays very important uh, uh, consideration otherwise what will happen if you uh, we have created the dining space and we are not able to place the dining uh, table at that particular place the reason may be the that particular location is uh, the space uh, connecting the different uh, rooms okay is a circulation space so in the circulation space that dining table we cannot keep so at the time of planning we are not uh, uh, prepare the drawings where the layout of the furniture is shown in that case that may happen but at the beginning itself while when we are planning the building at that time itself if we uh, draw the plan uh, arrangement of the furnitures uh, we can identify the uh, location of the proper location of the furniture is not uh, and we can see that that furniture is not uh, uh, hindering the functioning of the the 
persons, habitants or even it is not obstruction to the circulation from one room to another room. All spaces should be easily easy to accommodate the required furniture. If a bedroom is very small and if you want to have purchased a very big side bed, a double bed of king size that uh, is not able to accommodate then uh, that planning is not good. So at the time of planning itself we have to think of that. Corners of furniture should be rounded for easy movement of the person. If the sharp corners are there, then the person may have the obstruction while moving from one place to other place. Furniture should not obstruct operation of doors and windows. Sometimes uh, the uh, on the wall the uh, window is provided and very near to that window a big size bed is there. So to open or close the window you have to uh, climb on the bed and then you have to operate. Okay, that type of thing should not happen. Even to operate the doors and windows very near to dining table, you are not able to operate the door window from inside. You have to go to outside and operate the doors and windows. Then furniture should not obstruct circulation. Furniture dimensions should be ergonomically designed. Now this ergonomically we will discuss what is the ergonomics. Okay, this uh, we will cover in our next uh, uh, session. That is the session number three. So, <clears throat> these are the uh, ergonomics, uh, this part we will cover in the session 2. So, today we started with the uh, uh, principles of uh, planning. So, planning uh, basically starts with the deciding the type of the building, then uh, what is the space required for uh, each and every activity, then how much land is required, then how much uh, uh, which type of building we need to construct, where we have to purchase the building, proper site selection is required, then how to arrange the spaces using the line plan, we are arranging different spaces, then how to arrange these, identify different activities, then we classify the activities in different categories, positive activities, negative activities or positive space, negative space, the space where more time is spent space where less time is spent, then the uh, public space, then private space, then work space. Then uh, using the uh, line plan, we have to arrange the different uh, uh, line plans and sketch, arrange the spaces using the principles of uh, planning. We started with the uh, aspect, prospect. These are the principles, we use the aspect, then prospect, then uh, the circulation, uh, then we discussed about the economy, how to introduce the economy and uh, then uh, how to, what is the meaning of elegance and how to achieve it, what are its plus point and minus point. Then the flexibility, uh, two aspects of flexibility, alteration addition and uh, the same space used for the two different purposes, maybe three different purposes, then uh, the furniture arrangement. So uh, now onwards from 8 to 14, there are 14 principles of uh, planning. So in uh, next session, session number 3 of this topic, building planning of the subject elements of civil engineering will be covered in session number 3. Thank you.